But with us now is from London, I-24 News European correspondent there, Jonathan Sacerdotti. Any, Jonathan, any type of thing that can be put in place when it comes to the authorities to try and stop this, you know, this is a, ma a mass amount of young people flocking over, you know, to the Middle East, to Syria, to join ISIS. In this case, the horrific notion of young girls, 16, 15, anything that can be done to stop them. That's right. We've heard from European leaders that they definitely want to stop this sort of thing from happening. But we've also seen in recent months that they've been failing to do that. When we saw killers in Paris uh, gunning people down who were believed to have connections to ISIS and Al-Qaeda in Yemen and other groups like that. So what we've now seen is the interior ministry officials in France saying that passports and ID cards of six people have been declared invalid for six months, a measure uh, that can be extended for up to two years. And that is to stop them traveling in order to join ISIS, as these girls are believed to have done from the UK, with a further 40 people due to have their papers declared invalid for similar reasons, and a promise from the French Prime Minister Manuel Valls that there will be more when he was talking about the case on Monday. Right, when he was talking about the case on Monday, but still, as, as we see, it's, it's the appeal, Ruthie, as you yeah. said. But what I want to add, just add, uh, sorry, Jonathan, just one thing, is that on the, on the push side of it, the pull, the appeal is, you know, the one thing, but the push, you know, why would these young girls, in fact, get up and go? So one of the explanations is exactly what you referred to before, is that on the other hand, on the one hand, there's a, you know, they come from traditional homes and traditional lifestyles, but they are, you know, in immersed in a society, society in a liberal way. Right, it's hard to reconcile. And this gives them a clear answer, you know, this, this is, uh, there's no, you know, liberalism. There's no, uh, you know, you, you don't, you're not torn by, you know, conflicting allegiances and loyalties. You're, you're part of a, a group that lives, uh, you know, that's the norm. You're, you're part that's of the, the norm. Yeah. But uh, Jonathan, and you know, back to you, I'm wondering, in, in terms of stopping it, is there a way and is there something that's starting to be done before these young people actually board a plane? You know, I guess when you're in your 20s, you can't be stopped, but 16, 15 year olds, this is almost like somebody prying on them on the internet. I mean, at the end of the day, they're finding these people, these young girls, on the internet, right? Is there something that, you know, is being talked about in the UK that can be done when it comes to web control? Well, one of the controversies over this particular case is that one of the girls is uh, seen to have contacted a, a woman who had left Scotland uh, previously to join ISIS and is now believed to be a recruiter for ISIS uh, of European and British girls like these ones. Uh, she has sent her a message uh, on Twitter in full view asking her to add her as a follower so that they could direct message one another. Now, there are accusations from the family of that previous deserter from the UK uh, and her lawyers that the police and the intelligence services should have been watching that Twitter account. In fact, they claim they are in order to investigate anybody sending messages like that, contacting her, asking her for direct contact so that they could perhaps themselves leave the country. That's very worrying. The other worrying aspect of this is that much of the news coverage here has insisted that these girls are in fact very normal British girls who have no inclination towards this sort of activity. Now, people aren't sure whether they believe that or not, because as Ruthie is saying there, it's very difficult to believe that a regular 15-year-old girl like those that most of us might know, uh, families and friends, that they would in fact be willing to go and join ISIS, especially as a direct result of seeing the vicious and brutal videos that ISIS releases exactly. of beheadings and burning people alive in cages, throwing gay people off the tops of buildings and the like. This seems totally at odds with what these girls should be learning at their school. And yet, this school where the girls attend in Bethnal Green is in fact uh, somewhere with, uh, with form already. One previous pupil has already left the country in order to go and join ISIS, which rather leads people in the UK and the rest of Europe to ask if there is a problem culturally in certain pockets of society, in certain schools, where what they're calling radicalization may be taking place. And again, that draws open the important question again of whether radicalization is something totally passive that happens to people when they watch things on the internet or hear things said yeah. to them by preachers or similar, or whether it's an active thing that people are pursuing themselves and these girls should, despite their young age, be held somewhat responsible for this desertion. You know, and st you know, somewhat responsible, and that, that's a question that's debatable. At the end of the day, they are 15 and 16. You know, that said, you know, finally, Ruthie, I'm wondering with you, 
What do we know about these women after? I mean, basically, we don't know anything, right? They just disappear into the they, border. They just disappear. But I just want to add also, I mean, it's not just women. It's young men also. Mm -hmm. And in the case of the men, in some of the cases at least, we're talking about people who are, you know, petty criminals, uh, you know, social misfits, school dropout, uh, ADHD, you know, sort of attention deficit disorder. Uh, and they are going there, you know, to be macho and to, to be, be rambo. In the case rambo. of these girls, yeah. that I have to say, yeah. I mean, you're, you're a teenager, you're impressionable. Yeah. You're looking for yeah. an identity. Look, it's still a... We, we, we should remember it's still a marginal phenomenon, although, as Jonathan mentioned, we are talking right. about radicalization. But that's, but, uh, that's that. yeah. Um, sadly, all the time we have for this. But Jonathan Sashadotti from London, always a pleasure to have you with us. Ruthie, see now I'm locking you in. Thank you. Thank you.